My name's Jill. My name's Rena. My name is Stephanie. And today we'll be doing a dissection of this frog. The frog belongs to the amphibian class and the chordata phylum. And jumping right in, we'll be talking about the skin. So on the frog, we have counter shading. So the top is darker and the bottom side is lighter. This allows the frog, when it's in the water, above it can't be seen, and below it blends in because of the light refracting off the surface of the water. Sorry. So after the counter shading, we're gonna go into discussing the skin structure. So for the structure, it envelops the entire body and the frog uses it for respiration while it's underwater. So instead of using the nostrils, the nostrils have a membrane that closes over and oxygen is moved through the water permeable skin so it absorbs the oxygen. On the opposite side, on the belly, this pouch here is actually called a seat pouch and it's located on the belly. This allows the frog to absorb water. Frogs don't typically drink water, they actually absorb it through the skin. Another cool factor about this little guy is they can actually, different species of frogs actually have different varieties of colors. Some to show that, hey, I'm toxic, don't touch me to warn off predators. And others just use it for camouflage like this little guy to hide from predators. Right, so moving on from integumentary system, we're gonna move on to the nervous system. In the nervous system, we're gonna talk about the nostrils, the eyes, and this little guy, the tympanum. So the tympanum is actually the frog's eardrum. So what it does is it's a membrane that transmits sound waves into the inner ear. It also protects the inner ear from water being able, from water and debris from entering the inner ear. So this is a model of the frog's brain. We're going to be discussing the three major parts of the brain. So this part is the forebrain, which contains the cerebrum. The olfactory lobes are going to be at the top of the cerebrum. The olfactory lobes aid in sense of smell. The cerebrum helps to control complex behavior. Underneath is the midbrain. So these help with the sight and other senses. The Hindbrain, which is this pink area, aids in involuntary activities and motor activities, as well as the spatial awareness and balance. As you can see, our little guy, the hindbrain, isn't as well developed as the midbrain or the forebrain. The forebrain is more developed than the midbrain, so the olfactory senses and the complex behavior are actually going to be more dominant than the sight, but the sight is going to be more prominent than the involuntary activities and motor activities. As you can see, the frog's eyes sit on top of the head and in a bulging way as well. This allows the frog to see in a 180 degrees radius, so it can see in the front to the side and partially to the back to help it avoid predators as well as be sensitive to signs of movement. So like I said before, when the frog is submerged, little coverings come over the nostrils and oxygen is taken in through the water permeable membrane of the skin. When the frog is above water, it doesn't actually have ribs or a diaphragm. So the way it breathes is it takes in oxygen through the nose, it lowers the floor of its mouth, and then closes its nostrils and contracts the floor of its mouth to force the air into the lungs. And that's how the frog breathes. Moving on to the circulatory system, the structure right here is the heart. The white membrane around it is the pericardium. Right here, we can see the model of the heart. The heart has three chambers. 
two atria and one main ventricle. The two atria are the right atrium and the left atrium. The left atrium receives blood from the lungs. This blood is oxygenated. The right atrium receives blood from the body. This blood is deoxygenated. A special adaptation is while the frog has lungs, it can also pick up oxygen from the skin. The blood returning from the skin is mixed with half oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Veins bring blood to the two atria, both of which will empty into the single main ventricle. Blood in the ventricle will be pumped in, out into either pulmonary or body circulation. Since there is only since there is only one main ventricle, there is some mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. But this ventricular fold makes sure that the blood is going to the right artery. Moving on to the reproductive system, this is a female, and so these are the ovaries, this blackish thing, and then the white things on top of it are the eggs. Um, the frog does external fertilization, so that means that the eggs are hatched after being laid. So the, the male gets on top of the female, and then the, the female kind of squirts out the the eggs, and then the male squirts his sperm on top of the, the eggs, and so that's ovi oviparous fertilization. Moving on to the digestive system, this is the esophagus, here is the liver underneath the lungs, and down here is the cloaca. All right, so here's the esophagus, and um, so the food moves from the mouth down the esophagus into the stomach, which holds and um, digest, partially digests the food. Here is the liver underneath the two lungs. And the liver is where bile is made, which helps digest the food. So the, the food moves from the stomach all the way into the small intestine right here. And from the small intestine, it goes into the large intestine, which is this lighter color right here. And then from there, it moves down um, to the clo cloaca, which um, secretes um, urine and reproductive um, tissue and um, poop, I guess. So. All right, so here's the small intestine. If pretty long. This part, the, the less folded part, is the duodenum, and then this part, the more folded, shrinky part, is the ileum. So underneath the lung is the gallbladder where bile is stored, and over, over here is the oviduct. Here are the lungs, this one right here and this one right here. These are the lungs, they are used in respiration. The frog can also um, Respirate through its skin. It can pick up oxygen through the skin, through capillaries. Amphibians such as this frog ventilate its lungs with positive pressure breathing as opposed to negative pressure breathing such as in mammals. The frog inflates the lungs with forced airflow. During each cycle of ventilation, fresh air is first drawn through the nostrils into a specialized oral cavity. Next, del air in the lungs is forced out through the mouth and nostrils. Finally, with the nostrils and mouth closed, the floor of the oral cavity moves upward, forcing air into the lungs. These right here, these little finger-like, spaghetti-like yellow projections are the fat bodies. What they are used for is for hibernation because they help preserve and store extra energy. Here are the kidneys. This is one kidney. And then here is the other. The kidney functions, it filters the blood, removes excess water, salt, nutrients um, not needed and also reabsorbs them when they are needed. Kidneys also make urine which empties into the bladder through the urinary the ureters. ureters. Um, um, the ureters is this vein-like structure right here and that will empty into the urinary bladder and the urinary bladder stores 
and excretes of the urine.